this is it. Five this. Five D nine. Oh, it's the camera. Right. I thought they're going from three D to four D. Oh. Five D nine. Missed four D. No. Oh, oh actually, five D. Five D. It's psychic. Actually, just, just, <laughs> you just sit here. That's I, what these things. That's what that thing does. It sucks in your mind. Actually, what they okay, do good have is four K. Actually, what they do have is four K, and now they have eight K. Four K is like eight times better than HD. Hang on. Let me turn this off. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to see every? It's like looking at a window, but they, I, I saw one at the electronic show in Vegas, but they don't do, um, they don't shoot a lot of stuff. They don't have images right? for it yet. Yeah. But so you they, saw images for it? How did I it did. Was it amazing? Crazy. Yeah. It's, it's literally looking at a window. Yeah. It's wow. crazy. Yeah. But sometimes I take it out of the show. Yeah. Well, it's funny. We, it's the um, HD we worry sometimes. Yeah. Well, we do. Detail. Yeah. We've added a little bit of, we've added a little bit of grain, actually, to our image. We do. Yeah. Because you want to maintain that illusion of the... Uh, it feels richer. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had the pleasure of coming down uh, to the set uh, in Brooklyn um, last year. And uh, it's, uh, I'm of that age where I was a kid when their kids were around. So just to see the stuff on the beds and the posters and stuff, how much fun is it uh, to grab and, and sort of research and find all those things and have them made so they can, you can put them in the house and the kitchen and stuff? It, well, it's amazing. We're both from that era. And just... Just yesterday, Joe and I were looking at a cut, and there was the, the neighbor's car was in the driveway, and a kid was loading something into the back. And I turned to Joe and I said, my parents had that station wagon, that exact one with that color, that wood paneling. <laughs> that was my car. <laughs> so it's great. It's really great. Yeah, it is amazing. Uh, and then what, what, do you th what are your thoughts on sort of that era now and looking back at it? Um, knowing what we know now, uh, how much fun is that for an audience to sort of relive those moments, but knowing, you know, I guess sort of how things turned out, but, uh, you know, sort of seeing it. it. It's interesting. It's such a, I remember when we started the show and I was talking to this group of people and I said, you know, it wasn't really that long ago. I, I wonder if this is even a period piece. And the whole room went silent and they all looked at me like I was a little bit crazy because the truth is it was a different era. And we had to sort of, Joel and I had to come to terms with the fact that it was a period piece, which made us, of course, feel very, very old <laughs> um, because so much has changed. The whole world has changed. We're in a, in a completely different era in so many ways. And I, I, I don't think I look back on it, or I don't think Joel does either, as a, as a, it's not one of those things like the 50s. It's not a simpler time or an easier time. It was a very fraught time, and people were upset, and people were scared. In that way, I don't know if the national mood or people's feelings are different. I think it depends on how old you are. Like you were saying, we were kids then. For, for us, that feels like childhood. So to some degree, it depends on how old you are and, and who's watching the show. Um, I remember talking to Kerry Russell on the set and you know on the surface obviously you know it's a spy thrillers that kind of thing and she really sees it as a relationship the show or told me she did between her and matthew reese's character and i found it fascinating to see how they evolved how you know one sort of felt it was more of a real relationship at some point and then another then the other one the partner did and then one sort of thought well maybe being in america is the place for us and our kids and other was like no no we got to help the motherland and stuff like that so i'm just wondering how that's evolving uh going forward in season two because there was such great back and forth i found between the two of them um you tell me first of all what do you what, you know sort of season two what we're going to sort of see well we talk a lot about the, about those relationships as the fundamentals of the show it's a show about identity and relationships and who we are and I think part of what's fun exploring is that we talk a lot, particularly in America, about our feelings, right? And our feelings in relationships. But really, on some level, what makes relationships are our actions, what we do, how we treat each other. And these are two people who, whatever feelings they've had over the years, they have this long, long history, and they have a family. And the second season is going to now explore, as they've come together since Elizabeth asking Philip to come home at the end of last season, what does it mean to come home to this family as things get more and more difficult for them in the Cold War. I was going to ask you, I guess one of the challenges too is that, you know, they're trying to maintain uh, this sense of normalcy there and, and, and obviously not give away their identities. But the challenge must be that, you know, the neighbors can't be that stupid and the kids are growing up so they're going to start seeing, well, this, what's going on in the basement? They're doing a lot of laundry down there. <laughs> so, uh, so how do you... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Constantly folding. Never dirty laundry. Never, never dirty underwear. Uh, so, so, so what are the plans for that to sort of introduce more challenges, certainly with the people closest to them figuring out slowly who they might be? Well, one thing we talk about is that uh, 
I mean, we talk about how the Paige is a teenager. She's getting a little older, and every teenager goes through a phase where they begin to believe that their parents are a fraud, <laughs> that they're not really who they say they are, and that that their hero worship has all been an illusion. And unfortunately, in Paige's case, it's really, really true. You know, also, if you, if you look at the actual illegals, and there were many of them throughout history, they weren't suspected. Their own kids did not, their own kids, like our characters, may have thought there were things wrong with them, but they never suspected them of being KGB spies. In your wildest imagination, that's not something you would suspect of your parents, and they were not suspected by their neighbors, and they were not suspected by their work colleagues. They tended to be given up because we ended up with spies inside the Soviet Union or the Russian intelligence service who eventually gave them up. So the thing about being an illegal and the reason the KGB put them here is because their covers were so secure. Now, that doesn't mean that the work they do can't put them in jeopardy and, and threaten to give them up. But man, the cover is awfully, awfully good. I guess it's such an unbelievable story that people would be like, yeah. right. I don't know. Um, is there anything that we're going to see in season two that sort of reflects what actually happened in history? I mean, I know the overarching, I mean, you still have Reagan and you still have, but, uh, but is there some events that might take place in this particular period? Yeah, we, we do have some things and some people, you know, we talk a lot about the fact that we have a great thing in this show in that the history is always there. It's like an extra dimension. We don't just have characters and, and stories and things going on. We have this history that because of the work they do, the actual events are so important to them, so important to Philip and so important to Elizabeth, and, and the events are kind of pushing in on them all the time. So they add this, this great tension to what's going on. And we don't have a, a sort of singular episode this season the way we had the, the Reagan assassination, but we have stories that are going on in Nicaragua and Afghanistan, all all the things that were that were percolating in the world. Okay, cool. uh, and if I just want to ask you sort of about uh, the FX brand and, and what that means, certainly for the number of episodes you make and, and what you're allowed to do uh, and the time you can take uh, to, to do the show properly, right? I mean, you see all the other the conventional networks trying to catch up to what, you know, yourself and HBO and those kind of places are doing. So how would you sort of speak about that and why this fits in with the brand? Well, we have such great partners at FX, and I can't imagine doing this show anyplace else. They just challenge us to dig deeper every time. And uh, we feel incredibly supported and challenged in the right sense of the word. Um, so you know, we're fortunate to have them. I'm always, uh, you know, I'm still relatively new to television, mm -hmm. and I, I talk to people a lot who have been in television for years, and they have this experience of, oh, the dreaded network notes, where they, you know, the networks give them problems, and, and they feel that their shows are somehow, you know, compromised or made worse because of what the network brings to it. A and I, I sort of sit there, and I think, wow, that's, uh, that's awful. <laughs> I can't imagine, and I have just the opposite experience, where the network is always always making it better, and, and they're, such, they're a creative partner for us, and, and they're, they're dramatically brilliant, and they add to our story in so many ways, and, and yeah, we just, we feel very lucky. Cool. Well, I can't wait for the next season. Hey, Best of luck. So Thanks. Thanks. Right. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed uh, season one, so.